My name is Kara, and it's about two weeks of whips and FOs. So I was on vacation. I went to Oahu for a week with my family, and it was super, super fun. I got really tan. I mean, I hope. I mean, I sat on the beach for a while hoping to get tan. But I spent a little bit of time knitting, but most of the time relaxing or pattern writing. So we have two weeks worth of whips, but it's honestly more like one week. And I don't really mind knitting on the beach. Like I know some people don't really like getting like sand on their yarn, but I find that it just like shakes off pretty easily. But I guess it kind of depends on what yarn you're using. And I was actually using lighter weight yarns than I had last year. So last year I went to Maui and I only knit with super chunky yarn and that was kind of miserable. So this time around, I was working with more like DK and Aran weight yarns and it was still pretty hot, but I think the trick is to like just not let the yarn touch your legs. But the first part of my trip was pretty busy because I had to finish writing all the patterns for my autumn drop and then I had to choose testers for that. And then I had to pattern edit my two to nines dress, which just came out. And then I had to like release that pattern, which was kind of a lot. So the first half of my trip was like taken up not by knitting, but like all the things that surround knitting. But the second part of the trip was very relaxing and I'm glad I went somewhere this summer. And now my deadline of moving to New York is approaching in like three weeks and I'm a little bit stressed. I'm trying to get rid of yarn and clothes and everything. And now I'm kind of thinking that I won't get rid of all my yarn. I'll like allow myself to bring like half a suitcase of some yarns. But I don't know, that seems like a slippery slope. But anyways, let's just get into it and let's just talk about my work this week. So first things first, I finished my Chunky Valerie sweater. And this is in Wool and the Gang, Crazy Sexy Wool in Hot Punk Pink. And I adore this yarn. Like, I just love the pink that it comes in. I decided to make a super deep V neck sweater. And this one is medium, so it's a little oversized on me, even though it's supposed to fit oversized. So I would actually make a small next time, but I just wanted to see how it would fit and how much yarn it would take. And I actually finished this like 20 minutes ago and I haven't had the time to measure how much yarn it took. I'm not very good with the weights and figuring how much yarn it takes, but I think it took about five skeins. I don't know, I have to double check because I also use some like scrap yarns. But I just thought like, oh, I've made like a ton of super chunky like crew neck sweaters. Why don't I make a super chunky V-neck sweater? And I'm kind of of the opinion that if you're gonna make a v-neck sweater it should be a really deep v because i think that those are super flattering and i just love it when they're oversized but i might have made the v a little bit too deep for this one because this is like the first time i made it so i adjusted the pattern obviously but for my second i'm probably gonna make the v slightly less deep just so that it doesn't fall off your shoulders immediately and an off the shoulder sweater is a vibe but like <laughs> it might get a bit annoying if your like v-neck sweater just always slipping off but I forgot how nice it is to knit with super chunky yarn. Like I was just sitting at the chair like after lunch, just like chilling. And I was like, oh, like let me finish one sleeve. And then I finished it really quickly. And then I was like, I might as well pick up the stitches for the other sleeve. And then like before I could blink, like I had finished the other sleeve and the sweater was done. But yes, I am planning to make another one, obviously following the modifications that I made in the pattern. And I'm thinking I'm gonna make it in Malabrigo Rost and Apple Green. Okay, this one is familiar because I did say that I finished this a few weeks ago, and I did, but I finally added the buttons to it. So it's the drop the game top. And I just decided to go with these cute little yellow buttons because there's like subtle hints of yellow in the yarn itself. And this is Ching Fiber Melted Baby Surrey and Lullaby Held Double. And it took about three skeins to make this. And I am planning to make a second one in orange and like a sport weight yarn, so. But I just thought I'd let you know that I finally added the buttons. <laughs> Next, I have a Ollie sweater light here. And I showed you guys the Ollie sweater, just like the chunky version last week, I think. And so this is just gonna be a super basic bottom up sweater. And it's supposed to be like friendly for like absolute beginners. And this is in Malabrigo Chunky in the colorway Lettuce. And I really love this color in this yarn, I think. Like I have it in the Rasta as well, so like the super chunky version. But I definitely prefer it as like the chunky yarn because it's a little more like subtle i think and i think the colorway is just prettier although they look pretty similar but this one is also just kind of flying off my needles like i didn't bring it with me to hawaii so not much progress has been made since last week but like this is not even an afternoon's work i think like i was just kind of casually knitting this and like making some swatches of other things at the same time but hopefully it'll be finished up soon because i do want to put out the call for testers pretty soon for those like 
series of like super beginner friendly patterns. But I was a bit distracted with my autumn drop because I was like, oh, like seven patterns in one drop, that's enough. We don't need to add like four more patterns for absolute beginners to make it 11 patterns in one drop. Like even I can't do that. And the reason why I often put like a bunch of patterns together and like put them into drops is just because like the process of choosing testers is definitely my least favorite part of the process of writing patterns because I know everybody wants to test and it's really hard to choose like just a few people for pattern testing. And so I'd rather like have people apply to multiple rather than have the same people apply over and over again and just be like, oh, like I can't fit you into this test knit, but I can fit you into this one. So let me put you into this one. And I actually do like pattern testing for other people as well. I just haven't had as much time to do so this summer because I've had so many of my own ideas and I've been kind of overwhelmed with like trying to get those out first, but I am part of at least two test nets right now and I'm going to get that done and I'll tell you guys about it soon. Okay, this one I finished on the plane back from Hawaii, but I did start it like on my second to last day. So this is a drop the game cardigan and it's in Madeline Tosh Sport in Toasted Sugar in addition to one strand of Isaker mohair in Clementine, something like a really bright orange, and then one strand of like plain Surrey just to kind of soften things up. And I really, really, really like how it turned out. I had never worked with sport weight yarn before, I think, and I was like, hmm, sport weight yarn might take too long. Let me just throw in some more like Surrey and like mohair yarns just to make it a little bit fluffier and just to make it a little bit easier for me to knit with. And the only problem with like holding multiple strands of yarn together and especially if it's fluffy yarn is that it'll always get tangled no matter what. Like I'm always pulling from the center of the skein but it always gets tangled. Like it'll either like pull out too much and then somehow like it'll just get tangled with itself or get tangled with each other. So like every like 20 minutes I would have to undo a knot or some sort of tangle. And they weren't always big tangles but it was a lot. <laughs> But I did decide to modify the pattern itself and I'm adding that to the pattern because it's still in testing right now of just adding a button band to it just because like in case you want to like have buttons and like actually seal up your cardigan like you have that option. But now I just have to decide what buttons to put on it and I have to find my button collection. It's somewhere. I want to put orange buttons on this because like it's an orange cardigan. But I don't know if I have orange buttons. But I also decided to make a medium for this one just to test out the yardage of the yarn. And it took me less than two skeins to make this. So I'm pretty happy with like how far yarn goes when you work with like that weight of yarn, like super thin, not super thin, less than chunky yarn. It goes very far. Like I'm used to sweaters and cardigans taking like six to seven skeins of like anything. But like the fact that this took two skeins of like sport weight yarn is crazy. And yes, I know that I did add in some fluffy lace yarn, so it technically wasn't just two skeins, it was probably about four, but like those fluffy weight yarns were technically optional. Like I don't think it would have changed the fit of the sweater that much to have omitted it. But then again, I'm no expert in like holding yarns double and triple or whatever. Like I'm all about using like super chunky yarn and chunky weight yarn. I'm not used to working with lighter weight yarns held with lace weight yarns. Next whip I have for you is a cardigan that I have in progress. So I just kind of conceptualized making another cardigan and I wanted to make it like kind of crew neck. I don't know what these type of cardigans are called, but it's with Knit Picks Big O in North Pool Heather or something. This lovely blue, I love it. And it's with Noro Crayon in, I can't remember which colorway it is, but I'll look it up and put it in the, in the bio. But it's kind of a crew neck, and so it has like that really soft like collar here, and then has a little bit of a button band. And I'm kind of figuring out what type of buttons I want to put on this one too. But I only have one sleeve left. And this one is just flying off my needles. Like I literally started this one like yesterday morning, and then I went to the nail salon and got my nails, my toes done, because I couldn't knit if I had my nails done. And I was just like vibing. And then I finished like a lot of it. So I just have one sleeve left. And I've like knit with like four to five skeins of this yarn already and I just like haven't learned the pattern yet. But really excited with how this is going to turn out. It's going to be like a super chill cardigan, kind of like the answer to all my crew neck sweaters. But if you have any suggestions for names, let me know because I am so bad at naming things. I've gotten a little bit better recently of like 
naming things, putting up the Ravelry pages, and just like preparing everything. But I feel like my like writer's block on how to name sweaters or cardigans and stuff is gonna come back soon. But honestly, this cardigan gives me very 80s vibes and I'm not really sure why. Maybe just because I like associate like woodsy sweaters and cardigans with the 80s. And again, I'm not really sure why, but I think also like the colors are very like woodsy and like 80s and like maybe just like the self-striping or maybe even 70s. The next FO that I have for you is the Ollie cardigan. And this is in Bella Brigo Rasta and Cucumber. I love this colorway so much. Like it's just such a pretty like pastel sea green, I think. And somebody said it was the perfect, perfect color for like the transition from like summer to fall. And I definitely agree. Like it's kind of that last like pop of color before like things start to get cold and you start to have to wear a bunch of neutrals and like, oranges and reds and stuff. So like a last hurrah to summer. But yes, this is the Ollie cardigan and it's supposed to be like absolute beginner friendly. And I'm obviously gonna put out a tutorial for this one too so that you can like follow along. And the pattern itself will have like a bunch of pictures of the piece as you go along so that you have an idea of what your piece should look like as you're making it. And I'm hoping to get these patterns out soon, but I'm kind of taking a break at the same time. Like I have so many different patterns in the works right now. And so I'm kind of gathering a few more before I put out the tester call because again, <laughs> I really don't like choosing testers because it's a little bit stressful. There's so many to go through and I just feel bad that I can't choose everybody. The next whip I have for you has actually been a whip for months because I've just been procrastinating on it. And I don't know why, because I'm actually very excited about this sweater and I just kind of started procrastinating on it. But it's this really cool like lace check pattern I have going on. And I really love this stitch. And I'm just, I think, trying to figure out how to grade the pattern itself because it's a little bit tricky because you want the squares, like you usually want like the lace square, regular square to line up. And so like grading is a little bit tricky because that like segment is about like six to seven inches. So you don't want each size to be different by like six to seven inches because that's like way too different. So I'm figuring out the grading for this one. And so I just need to finish the sample and then I'll brainstorm. But this is knit in Santa's Garden Coast in Jelly Bean Green. And so the bottom is done and I'm working on the back panel right now. So I think once I find the momentum and the motivation to finish it, it'll honestly take me like less than a day to finish it. But I just gotta find that momentum. And hopefully showing you guys this sweater will motivate me because like if I talk about it, I'm more likely to finish it because there's some accountability. But honestly, like I've shown you guys a lot of sweaters and I haven't necessarily finished all of them. I know that I haven't actually. But anyways, the next finished object I have for you is the Head in the Clouds vest. Oh, I just shook out a bunch of sand from it. <laughs> I had a photo shoot on the beach, so I think some sand got in the bag. But anyways, it's the Head in the Clouds vest and it's in Stonewash Blue from Wool and the Gang and the Crazy Sexy Wool. And I'm pretty sure that they discontinued this color, which I'm very sad about, but and it's also made in Malabigo Rasta and Natural for the clouds. And I just really love this one. I am trying to find yarn and ideas to make these seconds. And I'm kind of considering holding some chunky yarn double to make the super chunky yarn because I think that the yardages and like the weights would work out that way. But a few people have suggested that I just like make a midnight sweater or just use the Malabrigo Rasta and Matisse Blue that I have. So I might have to swatch it. I might have to stare at it a bit, but the second one's coming soon. But the Head in the Clouds vest is gonna be part of my Autumn Drop part two. And I'm really excited because like, my testers are already choosing so many different cool combinations. Like I've seen like a bunch of scrap yarns, I've seen Midnight Skies, like a bunch of different color combinations that I would have never thought of. I'm just kind of sweeping sand off of all the furniture because there was a surprising amount of sand on that vest. But now my next whip is a top-down lace sweater. Surprise, surprise. I've been kind of on a top-down lace sweater kick. But this one's gonna be like chevrons. It's kind of hard to tell it with it being so stuck on the needles, but it's in Wool in the Gang, Lil Heal the Wool, and like 
a green. It's one of their new colors in it, but I really like it. And so, ooh, it's coming out really well on camera. It's harder to see in person though. But yeah, I started this one and I know I shouldn't have because I have so many other things I need to work on, but I started it like last night and I've made this much progress. So I'm hoping that like once I finish the body, I'll be like kind of satisfied and start to go back to my other projects, but who knows? Honestly, like I'll probably finish the body and then I'll lose momentum on this project because like the sleeves always just take a long time and I lose motivation by the time we get to sleeves. Okay, the next one I have for you, I literally started when I was still on campus, like probably like in April and then I finished the body really quickly and then I honestly lost motivations and never finished the sleeves. But it's an eye for an eyelet sweater and it's in Malabrigo Mecca in <laughs> Olivia. I have to look up what colorway it is. But I really love it. I had never knit the eye for an eyelet sweater with non-fluffy yarn. And I just picked it up again like last night because I was like, you gotta finish it. Like either make a decision with the sleeves, like you can make it short sleeve or you can make it long and wide and stuff. But I decided to go with short sleeves because honestly it was faster and it kind of seemed more appropriate for the sweater. Like it's kind of more of like a top and I like it a lot. Like I think it'll be fun for the fall, like when things get a little bit colder, but like not winter cold. But if I'm being honest, like I'm probably not gonna bring it with me to New York and I have no idea what the fall and winter are like in New York anyways. So yeah, like I decided to use this yarn because I had a bunch of the Malabrigo Mecca and I wasn't a huge fan of it, mostly because it wasn't as bulky as like the Malabrigo Chunky and I wanted to use it more for like a chunky weight yarn, but it's kind of more of like an Aran weight yarn because it's just not as thick. But it turned out really well for this pattern, I think, because it kind of gives it a nice like drape and a little bit of body, but the color is really pretty too. So pretty happy with how this turned out. And I did just kind of make it short sleeve because I was lazy and I didn't want to knit sleeves. Next, I have a To Be So Lonely sweater in progress. And it's a second Harry Styles inspired sweater. And I named it the To Be So Lonely sweater because it's after Harry's song and he sings it in the tiny desk. And I just love, love, love that performance. And this is knit in Santa Scar and Borset Alpaca in Jelly Bean Green. And I really like this yarn. It doesn't have as much shine or sheen as like a chunky mohair does, but it's just as fluffy and I really love the colors that it has or it comes in. And this is about one plane ride trip to Hawaii's worth of work. So I finished the back, or maybe this is the front. I think this is the front. The neckline's a little bit lower. And I made solid progress on the back. So I just need to finish the body of this one. And I decided to make the large because I was testing out like the pattern grading itself. And I was like, why not make a nice oversized sweater for yourself? But I think I've become like way, way, way better at this stitch. Like very little mistakes. Like I kind of barely even need like the little markers that I place in between each pattern repeat, but I definitely kept those markers anyways. And I'm excited to finish this one. I just, I have to find the motivation to finish it. But I have a solid deadline of when I need to finish the second one by, and that's during my autumn drop release because the To Be So Lonely sweater is part of that drop. And I feel really good about this drop. Like I've actually finished quite a few of these seconds for the drop itself. And so I'm ahead of schedule. And my final finished object for you this week is actually drying right now on the blocking mat. So I can't show it to you because it's super wet and I'm kind of scared to pick it up. But it's my second Checulator sweater and it's made in Ching Fiber Dash and DK and their new Lace White Surrey, both in the colorway Pufferfish and one strand of plain undyed Surrey just to give a little bit more body. And I was a little bit nervous about this one because I thought that holding so much fluffy yarn might kind of make it so that you can't see the lace detailing as much, but I think it gives it a really nice subtle look and I did like knit a little bit of a swatch beforehand so I knew it would work out. But I made this sweater while we were just driving around the island and like it was really nice because I would like put on the nav and I'd put it on like the display and then I would just get to sit and vibe and like play my music and like finish the sweater. And then I'd look out the window and see like the most beautiful views and it was a great time to finish that sweater. And the only bump with this one is that I was using DK yarn and I didn't really know what the yardage was. Well, I did know what the yardage was and I calculated it. And basically like I calculated it to find out that I had about like 20 meters of leeway with this sweater. Like 
I can't remember if it was under or over, but I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> I might not have enough yarn to finish this sweater. And the next possible like pre-order to get this yarn is like not delivering until August 22nd, which is a long time away and I don't want to run out of yarn. So I ended up knitting the sleeves a little bit shorter than I wanted them to be. So then I was like, I'll just block it longer. It'll be fine. So that's why I'm blocking it so soon after I finished it. And because I am getting used to like knitting with like lighter weight yarns like DK and Aran and stuff, like I'm trying to figure out the yardage for everything and I'm still not very good at it because it still blows my mind that you can knit an entire sweater with like two skins of yarn in like my size. But that is all that I have for you guys this week and last week. Thank you so much for sitting with me and my rambling. We'll get back to our regular scheduled program of like once a week vlogs of just updates of like my whips and FOs. I have a ton of plans of things that I wanna knit before I move, but the deadline is approaching of me moving. So it is a little bit stressful, but I'm gonna deal with that stress by just knitting a bunch. But thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Happy knitting and see ya.